Okay, so we hit the button. We did the thing. I'm just going to wait for YouTube to tell me that it's actually getting the stream. Okay, apparently things are live. We might hear an echo of my voice very shortly. Just as I check okay, the thing. Okay, so we hit the button. We did the thing. All right, there we go. The echo has occurred. How are you guys doing? We are live. It's happening. And I feel flustered on this busy, busy day. And so we're uh, just going to settle in. I'm making sure my streaming stuff is behaving as we get ready for the Bungie stream. Now, let's see. I'm going to hit record in my uh, OBS software here to make sure that we don't get any silly behavior while we're also streaming. Okay, everything looks good. How you guys doing? What's popping? It's all going on today, man. It's going to be a pretty interesting day, isn't it? And we had a bit of a surprise yesterday with Bungie dropping the, uh, the trailer and stuff and details about Season Pass. That was pretty cool. I was not really expecting that just yesterday, so I guess it kind of gives us a little bit more focus today, doesn't it? Because we know kind of what the theme is going to be and stuff like that, and it means we can get in and actually see some of that content, get some of the finer details and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's going to be good. We'll try and keep up with chat. I'm just uh, rearranging stuff. I'm making sure YouTube is working well as well because it decided like two minutes before the stream was live to give me a notification telling me to use a different tool. And we already have a couple of uh, members today. So Jordan Day, thank you. Good sir for becoming a member. Really appreciate that. Before we even got the stream going. That's amazing stuff. And Connor, my dude, thank you as well for joining the club. It's all going on. I appreciate it, man. Really appreciate the support. I hope you guys are hyped for uh, what should be some pretty exciting stuff today. So yeah, we're going to be waiting for Bungie to go live. We'll talk a little bit during the stream, although I will keep it kind of minimal. Bungie prefer, you know, when you kind of commentate over these things so that it's somewhat original content, but it's one of those because um, obviously we want to hear what the devs are saying. We want to hear what they have to say on all the stuffs and not necessarily me immediately. But of course, I will be recapping everything. And we already got a couple of thousand of you guys in here. It's amazing. But yeah, thank you guys for the support. Trials. I know, trials, right? This is something a lot of people are talking about. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a thing, like genuinely. Um, it strikes me as a lot of content to get right, but we'll wait for the stream and we'll just uh, we'll just see how it goes. The Saint 14 reveal was bit, uh, pretty lit though, right? I'm just going to check my stream on my laptop. So give me two seconds. Maybe you heard a bit of echo right there, but it's working, so that's good. And hopefully we're all live in the uh, in the sub feed and with the notifications and things like that. So that would be rather lovely. I'm going to reduce my preview quality of the stream right here because uh, there is a lot going on. Yeah, I think obviously the trials question, you know, Bungie have spoken about trials and they've indicated that they want to do something with Trials in the future or something like that, right? So I guess with um, with this being an Osiris-themed thing, there's definitely a connection there. Uh, but whether we're going to get that content right now, you know, obviously is a completely different question. So we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Justin, dude, thank you so much for the $10. Keep up the good work. I appreciate that, man. That means an awful lot. I'll do my best to keep it going. And we have another new member, Kyle. Dude, thank you so much for the support. It's awesome to be back on stream. We don't stream a whole ton, but uh, it's really nice to jump in and kind of live stream and talk about what Bungie is showing off when we have these reveals, right? Because, um, yeah, a bit of a different experience and we can kind of consume the content. I actually find it better for my kind of focus, you know, while I'm uh, seeing what Bungie are talking about and kind of making notes and seeing what the community is saying and everything like that. It keeps me on my toes for uh, actually kind of doing roundup videos and things like that. So that's pretty dank. Hopefully you won't be hearing any kind of boy races or anything driving past my rather noisy house at the moment. Mute, my dude. Thank you so much for uh, becoming a member. I appreciate that. It means an awful lot. And Steven, man, thank you for the tip. You guys always surprise me with these tips and things like that. That's uh, very, very kind of you. 
I'm just rearranging stuff to make sure that uh, I can see all of the chat and everything going on like that. Houndish Twitch stream when? Maybe sometime in the future. You never know. It's keeping on top of the uh, video schedule and streaming. That's that's like the real challenge. Anyone who's doing that and doing it well is like an absolute G. How's the new house going? It's going good. We're slowly working our way through a few uh, issues. A few things you might expect with a renovation, but it's all good. We're very busy. It's a little bit stressful, but, uh, but yeah, it's fun. We've got a lot to look forward to, so. Eyes on the prize. It's time to grind. That's kind of the uh, the approach that I'm trying to keep on top of. And <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Any info about SRL coming back? I haven't heard anything. I don't know if we had any uh, kind of teases or whether that's a thing Bungie are interested in doing. But uh, I personally do quite enjoy uh, SRL. Back in the day, it was a lot of fun. The Now Drinks. Yes, I, I have tried the Now Drinks. I do quite enjoy them. Josh, dude, thank you so much for the tip. You're the best. That That is super kind of you. That's like immensely kind of you. Jordan as well. Thank you so much. Truly the best channel for D2 news. Wow, that's really kind of you, man. Especially with so many uh, content creators for Destiny. That's I really appreciate that. There's a lot of uh, cool people. Record your videos on stream. Yeah, totally. That's, that's the thing you can do. Kind of manage your time and... Do that side of things as as much as you can while you uh, while you're streaming and stuff. Totally. Josh, thanks for the great videos, man. That's really kind of you. I appreciate that. I'll do my best to keep it rolling, and I uh, I appreciate the tip as well. Thanks, man. Teeth X, is that is that a way to say your name? Either way, you are a new member, and I really appreciate that. Thanks for dropping by. I'm going to drop some different B-roll. Let's have a look right here. Some different B-roll right here that has uh, all of the season pass rewards for uh, season nine. So we can get a little bit of a preview right there. We did talk about it in a video yesterday. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it, but in case you haven't, these will be the new kind of rank rewards and things like that. So get ready for a new grind, I guess. It's going to be pretty awesome. Right then. If I go quiet ever so briefly, I'm just making sure that everything is behaving. We're not going to have any silliness. I'm on a different PC than what I normally uh, used to stream. So it's a slightly newer rig and I'm uh, hoping everything's all good because we haven't really done any streaming on this on this machine. So we're, we're jumping straight in with it this week, getting ready for all the uh, new juicy content. But yeah, for real, if they if they announce trials, like people are gonna go absolutely crazy. I think there'll be obviously some disappointment if they don't, because I can see some anticipation kind of building up for it. Um <laughs> So yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see how it goes, but I'm hoping the season in itself is gonna be pretty cool. And like the story side of things as well, same 14 and all of that is something I was not kind of anticipating we would get. It seems like there's a lot of story background potentially there so i think that's pretty exciting bungie are just booting up their stream now they don't have they're not they're not actually fully live they're just uh, getting things going so shortly we will jump over to the bungie stream they will have a countdown and that hasn't quite started just yet so we got a little bit of time oh and i'm hearing some funky music right there we're gonna turn it down ever so slightly because that was probably a little bit loud right there. And so, okay, let's get the uh, the stream things going from Bungie. We'll leave the B-roll up for just a second here and then we'll switch over. <clears throat> We're getting ready for it. If I'm a little bit late on any um, call-outs and things like that for uh, tips and stuff, I do apologize. For some reason, in the uh, stream window right here, it seems to be cutting off some of the messages at the bottom. What am I looking forward to the most? Um, well, to be, it's it's a little bit of a mix, like the story stuff. Saint 14 looks really pretty awesome, right? And as a Titan main, I absolutely love the armor that they've showed off in some of the screenshots and stuff. So really kind of curious to see uh, what they'll do with the story and what Osiris is going to be up to as well. And kind of the sundial obviously being the main activity 
It's a pretty big deal, right? We just had the Vex Offensive, and there was definitely mixed feedback for that one. So we, I, I think a lot of people are curious to see that, right? How deep is that kind of end game going to be, the new activity? And yeah, hopefully it'll be pretty cool. It certainly looks cool, like some of the artwork and stuff that you can see for it. Looks pretty interesting. It looks like maybe the, we've got like four timelines, right? Like all of the Mercury timelines and then like a weird between timelines kind of thing going on, maybe. Maybe something like that. What's my opinion on custom editing shaders? Hunter, thanks for the tip as well. Um, That would be absolutely awesome. Yeah, I think that would be really cool if you take like... I mean, I know Anthem. People will have a an emotional response when you talk about Anthem. But, you know, look at the kind of like cosmetic customization in that game. Um, I think it's a really good example of what you can do with those kind of systems. I'd love to see that in Destiny. I don't know whether they could make it work or... The technical side of it obviously is different, but yeah, I think it would be awesome to be able to do it. Daywalker, my dude, thank you for the support. The best Destiny YouTuber. That's very kind of you, my friend. I really appreciate that. Zachary, my friend. I really appreciate the tip and the kind words about the channel. I'm doing my best to keep it rolling, so uh, it means a lot. Jay, thank you for joining the channel as a member. Really kind of you, my friend. So we're going to see. Hopefully we're not missing any channel members. I'm not sure if my uh, my feed is showing me everything correctly. Because I'm, I'm like in the old version of the YouTube dashboard, basically. Um, and there's a new one as well. And they're both currently a thing. And I've always used the old one, obviously, since the dawn of time. And I'm terrible at upgrading things, so... I'm hoping everything's working properly, because uh, YouTube's pretty crazy on that front. And hopefully the audio and all that good stuff uh, is all cool as well. Right here in the stream. Let us know in the chat if it isn't, or anything crazy happens. But hopefully we're all good for now. And Bungie's stream say they have just shy of seven minutes until they go live. So we'll switch over to their kind of preview screen in a couple of minutes' time. Yeah, things are going good. Just very curious to see what details they give us today. I want to see the loots. I'd be really curious to see, like, artifact mods and stuff like that as well. I'd love to see uh, the new mods we'll get to play with and how different they are as well from, you know, last season. That'd be cool. I mean, I'm guessing some of them will be somewhat similar, right? Like the uh, champion mods and things like that will still exist. We can even see, like, champions in some of the um, Sundial gameplay, as far as we can tell as well, so... Obviously, they're going to be a thing, still. Daywalker. Dude, thank you so much for the tip. You're at the airport and still enjoying the quality content. Have a good flight, my friend. And uh, enjoy your travels wherever you're headed. Sounds like fun. Goji. Thanks for the, uh, for the tip. Let's hope for a new raid. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious about things like that. Um, hopefully will get a good flow of content. It's one of those, isn't it? You don't know how much to kind of build expectation for things like that. I mean, I wouldn't have expected to see raids necessarily in the annual pass. And they revealed Black Armory, like, kind of close to when it came out. And it turned out to have a raid, right? So it's like, you never know. But I try and stay fairly open until Bungie talk about stuff. <laughs> Shadow Wolf, thank you for the tip. You're an amazing content creator. I really appreciate that. Ready to meet the most legendary titan to ever live. I am totally ready. Yeah, I'm really excited to uh, to see Same 14. And to see the character develop as well, right? Like, you can see the different kind of um, armors and stuff that he has. Like, he seems to have, like, a basic version of his gear. And then later on, we see it kind of upgraded. So, I guess maybe when we first run into him, he'll be... To this oh, it's Deej. We got Deej. Reveal live stream. We're grateful that you have gathered together to receive this message about action and hope and loot and heroism today. This is an opportunity for you to adjust your audio levels. We are doing the same thing inside of our studio Speak at up, this Deej. very moment. If you can hear the sound of my voice, please sign off in chat wherever you have gathered with a hell yeah. The stream will begin on numerous platforms, on numerous channels, in approximately 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Boom.
Cool, cool, cool. That was just Deej doing the uh, the sound check. Their mics are a little bit quieter than their uh, than their background music at the minute. So hopefully they'll boost that up because we are like maxing things out over here. That's like maximum volume from the bungee stream <laughs> that I can get. Leaving a little bit of headroom, and we should be good. But yeah, thank you for the kind words, uh, Wolf. And mute once again. Saint Fourteen is coming back. Long live the Russian king. Is he Russian? I mean, I'm really excited he's coming back for sure. I have seen some conversation, though, about whether Saint-14 is Russian or Greek. I'm not sure if uh, you guys have any insights about that. Although we do have a lot of hell yes in the chat right there, so... That sounds like a positive. I'm going to drop my commentary volume ever so slightly. Because Bungie's stream was a little bit quiet there, so we're going to kind of adjust ourselves... Ever so slightly in anticipation of uh, Bungie being maybe a bit quieter. Because we don't want it all of a sudden to go quiet. You might have to crank it. Alright, so let's jump, if I hide these B-roll channels here. Make sure Bungie's stream is actually visible. That's pretty healthy for us. I'm also going to hit record at this point. Giving you guys a running commentary of what's happening. Just to make sure that uh, OBS doesn't do anything crazy immediately before the stream, because you don't want it to crash as they go live. Which, don't worry, but that has happened to me before. I remember in a previous stream, it was like literally like a countdown. It was like three, two, one, and I, I hit a button on my PC and OBS just went not responding, and I'm like, oh no. But we got lucky, and uh, it didn't crash, so that's good. And you guys with the tips and stuff, this is absolutely crazy. I can't even keep up. Rink dude, thank you so much. Fingers, I really appreciate that. Shout out to my pals Jeepers, Milky, Irofo, Irofo, and Penalak. I hope I said that right, man. I really do. We got one shot. <laughs> Jordan, can we get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. We got it, man. Thank you for the tip. Don't get the preemptive upset. On the new Warlock buffs, the melee was made usable at will, and we're just flat out more mobile. Solar hunger. I'm really curious to see those. Thank you for the tip, my friend. I appreciate that. Chaos. Thanks for the tip. What if Trials is headed by Saint-14? That would be amazing if that was a thing. Clint. Dude, I appreciate that. It was a pleasure meeting you. You're the same in person as you are on the tube. You and Mesa are my favorite content creators. Dude, thanks a bunch, man. That's absolutely awesome. Right, we need to keep up. Alphonse, man, thank you. Stealthy, I know you. What you doing in here? Giving me tips. I appreciate it, my friend. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this as well. It's going to be awesome. The Canadian Norman, how you doing? Thank you for uh, becoming a member. That's absolutely dope. And Jerry, thank you for the tip as well. I can't see all of these messages because for some reason, not everything is scaling up appropriately. But you guys are being amazingly kind. And so what we're going to do, as the countdown kicks over and Bungie start their stream, I will uh, kill the shoutouts and things like that for obviously a few moments. So bear that in mind for us guys, but hopefully we're going to see some absolutely awesome stuff. So uh, yeah, going to be really cool. Houndish here. Indeed. We're live. We're doing it. i got my notepad ready. We're going to be uh, taking notes and then... Once Bungie wrap up, we'll kind of fairly quickly wrap things up with the stream, just as a quick heads up, um, so that I can kind of go straight into a video with a fresh mind and all that good stuff. Demert, dude, thank you for the tip. Thank you guys for the kindness, man. Here we go. Let's check it out. Let's see what they got. Busy, Guardian. A new 
slew the undying mind, you changed the course of history. Now time is broken on Mercury. Fractured by the Legion. They intend to write a new history. A new ending to the Red War. If you're willing to help, you'll need to walk the corridors of time. And you'll need my sundial to do it. I built it so that an ally of mine could cheat death. I failed to help him, and his death remains my greatest regret. They call me the greatest titan who ever lived. the sky down upon them. Hello and welcome to a Bungie live stream. We are here to take a look at Season of Dawn. I'm Deej, I'll be your host, and I'm joined on set by two developers who have led our development team in the creation of this new story that we'll be telling. And how are you today? Good. Good, thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, Rachel and Jonathan, do me a favor, uh, introduce yourself to our community by talking a little bit about what you do at Bungie and what was your unique and personal contribution to Season of Dawn. Um, I'm a producer on Vanguard Omega. Uh, I helped lead all the different disciplines and create this really cool experience for the community. And uh, I was a narrative lead on the season. I uh, collaborated with design and art to help bring you guys the story of St. Fourteen's Big Return. Very colorful today. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for noticing. It's a, uh, it's a lion, and it is meant to remind me that a lion doesn't try to be fierce. It just is, just like St. Fourteen. <laughs> That wasn't That's rehearsed at all. That's not a joke. No, it, no, and it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't rehearsed either. It was, it was very extemporaneous. Um, you know, regarding St. Fourteen, uh, the past 24 hours have seen a great deal of St. Fourteen hype, I guess we would have to say. Yes. And uh, as developers, as creators, uh, what has been your own personal response to their reaction to the Season of Dawn reveal trailer? Uh, I spent most of the night watching all of the reaction trailer, or reactions to the trailers. It was probably my favorite part of the evening with my fiance. We just sat there and watched as people tried to speculate what was gonna be happening through the season. Uh, Professor Brumman was probably my favorite reaction so far. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was a lot of cursing. It was a little, a little bit of cursing, a little bit of curse words, but that enthusiasm, uh, you know, those real-time reactions, those, those visceral reactions to the things that we work so hard on, I mean, is that not the best moment as a developer is you know, when you create something, to see someone respond to it, to see someone experience it for the first time, that's Absolutely. why we do yeah. it, right? Absolutely, and I, I totally get the, the fan experience. Um, I, I was a fan during uh, Vanilla Destiny 1, uh, when I was just a player, I was a fan of Saint-14's character, uh, back when he was just a, a grimoire story and a, and a helm. Um, it has been, it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, help bring a, a deep lore character like Saint-14 to the forefront of uh, the player experience in mm -hmm. Destiny. Um, it's, uh, it's too bad he's dead right now and the, the players are gonna have to, to pull a miracle out of their butts to save him, but <laughs> they've done it before, so maybe they can do it again. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> if anyone can, our community can. Uh, as somebody who has taken that deep lore character and, and given them new life, talk to me about how you relate personally to the character of Saint-14. Uh, so Saint is probably the most lawful good character that we've ever created. Mm -hmm. um, he, he loves pigeons. He loves pigeons so much that he's named his ship after them. 
Uh, he's very large. He's very wholesome. Yeah. And sometimes that gets him into trouble, uh, like the time that he died. Quite literally, a saint in that case. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, a virtuous character, I mean, uh, the he's, sacrifice. He's in trouble right now, guys. <laughs> he needs your help. Okay, uh, so that uh, help will be on the way on uh, December tenth, when Absolutely. season of dawn begins. Uh, less than a week away now. So uh, there's a lot of anticipation. There's a lot of excitement. Uh, Rachel, give us a sense. Um, you know, we start with an idea. We, we decide on a story that we want to tell. Uh, as a producer, uh, you know, sort of bringing all these disciplines together into one creative process, how did everybody sort of share that inspiration and that motivation in doing all of the work that made this possible? I mean, it really wasn't hard to bring people together in this case. Uh, John and all the writers um, on the seasonal team have really inspired a lot of the team and how we actually go about building the season. Uh, those, that passion is, is super inspiring. Was it Nico, Christine, and Paul, yeah. you guys were amazing. They were, they were all really amazing. Uh, and it, he helped really inspire how we built the season and, and influence what the actual season was. Uh, people brainstormed together. We built the season as a team collaboratively, just like we built everything in Destiny together. Uh, it, it was definitely a really cool collaboration and cooperation for everybody. You know, I want to share uh, a piece of art that I think a lot of people on the team have a lot of heart for. And this piece of art really encapsulates the mood that we've created with Season of Dawn. This is the idea that we've all come together to embrace. And Jonathan, what can you tell us about the themes and the ideas that are captured in this beautiful piece of artwork? And programming note, we will release this on social media imminently uh, so that uh, if you would like to make this your wallpaper or what have you, um, you don't need to go screenshotting right now. You only need to go and consult our Twitter channels. But Talk to us from a creative standpoint as to what this speaks to you about. Uh, for sure. So, so besides uh, being a, uh, an awesome, awesome piece of art, uh, all of that gear that you saw there uh, belonged to Saint-14. Um, uh, the piece, though, is not about the gear itself. The piece, to me, is about Saint's absence um, and perhaps even how Osiris feels about Saint's absence. Uh, the helm that you saw there is is iconic. Um, it's been uh, with us since the very first version of Destiny, and it's synonymous with Saint as a character. Um, the uh, the shotgun is uh, it's called the Perfect Paradox. It is Saint's uh, signature weapon. It was forged by our players way back in the Curse of Osiris expansion, and uh, I wrote the lore tab for that weapon that happened to insinuate that players would uh, perhaps one day be able to bring that weapon back to Saint-14. There's a huge problem right now, though, because he's dead. He's still dead. <laughs> and um, we're going to have to solve that before, before we, can, we can give Saint back his, his weapon. Um, the ribbons that you saw there as well, uh, Saint brought those with him everywhere. Um, there's more to their story than just armor ornamentation, though. And uh, we will uh, we'll get more into that as our story progresses. Wonderful. Uh, New mysteries to discover, new challenges to overcome, uh, new miracles to pull out of. We, we don't need to revisit that line of dialogue again. Uh, thank you so much for the work that you've done to create this moment of excitement for our community. Uh, people are really looking forward to embarking on this new journey, and uh, that happens on Tuesday. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. So um, telling a new story with Season of Dawn is just one of the things that we're doing. Uh, let's take a look at everything else that we have planned for the months and weeks to come. Uh, as is customary and typical, we like to release a calendar of all of the events. Uh, if you are screenshotting, if you are squinting to read the fine print, uh, this is also going out on social media. Uh, many different reasons to engage with Destiny, uh, many different awesome things to add to your collection, uh, special events to recognize the season, uh, exotic weapons that you can go on a quest to earn, uh, Crimson Days celebrating, uh, you know, uh, the love between members of our community, et cetera, and so on. So uh, with that, uh, please do consult our social media channels. And look at this, we have two more developers in our hot seats. Hello. Hello. Uh, Robbie, Tomo, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, Thanks for We're gonna us. have a conversation now about how the beginning of one season on the tail end of the end of another really will have an opportunity to change the game. Uh, and uh, before we jump into that conversation, give uh, our audience an idea as to, for yourselves, what you do at Bungie and uh, what was your uh, you know, unique fingerprint on Season of Dawn. 
So uh, I'm a creative lead at Bungie, which means uh, I'm the one who is kind of the, uh, the vision holder uh, for the, the, the seasons we're working on. Uh, and I basically work with the team in a collaborative manner to uh, collect the best ideas uh, and, and work on those ideas with everyone uh, to bring them to life in the game. Cool. Yeah. And Tomo. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm the combat air lead here at Bungie. Um, part of the systems team, and so something that we, uh, like one of our mandates is to make sure that we're continuously updating the game, keeping it fresh, keeping it engaging for players. And so definitely trying to do that again with Season of Dawn. Yeah, creating the action. Yep. In that moment when we finally get to play, we can feel your work. All right, that's wonderful. Um, Robbie, um, you know, Season of the Undying is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. Season of Dawn begins. Uh, this is going to be a different feel for our community than it was last year when we went from one season to the next. Can you give me a sense of how our goals are changing there? I know that we may have seen you or Luke Smith previously in uh, Bungie Media talking about the fact that we're trying to build something that lives, right? So yeah. talk to me about how the beginning of this season really is a realization of those goals. So something we're, we're, we're really trying to do is takes the take the triumphs, take the victories, and maybe even sometimes the failures uh, that you experience as a player uh, when you're when you're in these seasons, and have them uh, directly c connect and evolve uh, in the stories that we're telling moving forward. And so, you know, basically the community is actively stopping the Undying Mind right now and stopping the Vex threat from the Black Garden. Uh, and during this time, Osiris is in the Infinite Forest, and he sees he sees this timeline that the Guardians aren't on, and he sees Calamity. And so that's why he's leaving the Infinite Forest. And so basically your actions as a player are directly propelling us into the next season. And if you think about how we used to build uh, our campaigns, yeah. right? Like that would be an experience that you would play once at the beginning of the year. It would be finite and it would end quickly. And really what we're trying to do is kind of take that experience of the world changing, of the world evolving, of your actions uh, having meaningful impact uh, it's something that you experience throughout the year and not just you know at the burst uh, sure. whenever a big expansion comes out. Yeah. And so. I think if we look, to look back at Season of the Forge, Season of the Drifter, Opulence, they were these self-contained, very specific experiences that yeah. didn't relate to each other uh, all that much. But now there's this through line, there's this persistent narrative, and as you do these awesome things in Destiny, as you conquer your foes, you leave... Um, a lasting impact. A lasting impact, yeah. and, and you impact the way the story gets told and the way the story yeah. evolves. And so I think something also interesting that we get to do is we actually actively get to see how people are actually reacting to the stories that they're experiencing as well. And uh, as we're developing the future seasons as well, we're, we're thinking about that and we're thinking about the things that uh, they like and they dislike mm -hmm. as well, which, mm -hmm. is, which is different, which is different than what we've been able to do yeah. uh, in the past in some ways. So, so. In, in any moment of gameplay or discovery, you're putting the pieces on the board that you can pay off later. Yes, and I mean, it's something like John was mentioning before that we had something in deep lore, right, from, from years ago. And, and I think what we're seeing now is a game where we can actually, uh, players can actually initiate things happening. We actually get to react to them faster. We, you know, there's, there's going to be a, a lot less of the like, oh, there's something in lore that we never talk about. And it's going to be a lot more of like, okay, we say something at one point in the season and we really want to try to do react to it yeah. w within a, a shorter time period, really. Okay. So. Well, we've had a lot of talk so far about ideas and feelings and goals and ideas. Let's actually take a look at the game, Tomo. Uh, show us how we can configure a hunter for ideal combat conditions in Season of Dawn. Uh, this may be what your character looks like on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, first off, I look freaking awesome. I'm a hunter. That's of step one, of course. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, also, like Robbie said, like, uh, even through our combat and like the action game, we want it to feel like you're evolving. Your guardian, your uh, setup, your monster killing machine, that is evolving season over season. Um, one of the ways we're doing that, of course, is um, as you, some of you might have read on our weekly updates, uh, we have a solar subclass update coming um, with Season of Dawn. Uh, but on top of that, season over season, uh, we're injecting new ways to play uh, when it comes to like the artifact, changing mm -hmm. up the mods there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll dive in there real quickly. Um, as you can see, uh, last season it was the Gate Lord's Eye. This season uh, it's called the Lantern of Osiris. Uh, Osiris and Saint Fourteen are our two main storylines, and so this is part of a, a, a storyline that will evolve over the course of this season. And uh, you'll understand like where this kind of falls into place. 
Um, we've also changed up a little bit of the artifact and what uh, in the way like we have our mods laid out. Um, as you can notice, we have in our first column here now, uh, we have uh, our uh, champion mods. Um, because the artifact resets at the end of the season, you're, you're going to get a new one. Yeah. We want to make sure that this is something that you can uh, reacquire pretty early on. Uh, these are going to be for different weapon archetypes from what you're used to in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and these will help you overcome, and you'll see um, here shortly, uh, like the champions that we have for the Cabal. Um, this is your perfect weapon for the new combat conditions. As you go into the Sundial, which we will be playing in a matter of moments, uh, this is going to really play into how you can perfectly configure your character to confront those new challenges. Exactly. You know? And uh, this upcoming season, uh, we're focusing more on the long range combat, precision shooting. And uh, I'm sure Guardians have noticed that last season it was focused more heavily on Arc and Void. This mm -hmm. upcoming season, because we did the Solar subclass update as well, we're going to be focusing heavily on Solar and uh, Void as our secondary element. Okay. So here's a couple that I've selected uh, for myself. Um, I personally really enjoy pulse rifles and scout rifles and stuff like that. So I've, I've grabbed a couple of those. Um, as well as in the second column here, um, our Guardians probably re remember from this past season, all of them were reloader mods. We've actually mixed it up, so now you can also get unflinching for certain weapon archetypes, as well as uh, enhanced targeting. Uh, and then we've also added a couple new mods that players haven't seen yet. Um, my personal favorite that I'm looking forward to using is uh, this one called Guardian Angel. Uh, this allows you to get a chance of a healing orb to drop mm -hmm. if you get a precision kill. Uh, and yet, you have to use one of the precision weapons that um, is in meta for this season. All right. And then let's take a look at uh, configuring your character. Uh, Armor 2.0 was yeah. uh, something that people delved into for the first time at the beginning of last season. And I understand it's evolving in this season. It is. Uh, so. The rewards team did an awesome job of giving us Armor 2.0, uh, but Armor 2.0 by itself isn't the end of it. Like they've, they're continuing to enhance the experience. And something that you might notice is any uh, piece of gear that you acquired during Season of Dawn uh, now has a different symbol in their fourth uh, mod slot here. Instead of having the Vex uh, symbol for uh, signifying the last season, we now have a new symbol for Season of Dawn. And over the course of the season, uh, through various activities uh, within the season, you'll be able to acquire new mods that you haven't seen before. And these mods now have like a new mechanic that uh, is called Charge with Light. And when you're charged with light, uh, you actually get these benefits. Uh, so there's certain mods that allow you to get charges of light, and then there's certain mods that allow you to consume charge of light. And this becomes like this new gameplay engine that actually works throughout the entirety of Destiny now. It isn't just for the nightmare hunts or just for the raid. So we're pretty excited for that. Fantastic. All right, what else you got for us? What else is new? All right, uh, since I'm a hunter and I want to look cool, finishers is also a great way to look cool. Yes. Um, so I'm going to go down to the finisher blade, and players might notice here that now you don't have just a single finisher icon here, so, uh, signifying that that is what you have equipped. Instead, now we have a new multi-equip feature. Uh, on systems, we want to continue to evolve our features and continue to make the experience better for our players. And so what multi-equip does is more or less like a playlist for your finishers. And you can have up to nine in your bucket here. And then you can actually just do like a right thumbstick click. And then you can favorite them. And you see that little star next to that uh, mm -hmm. where it says legendary. Yeah. And then that allows you to actually then have those randomly be selected when you're doing finishers in the game. And you want to preview one of your favorites for us? Yeah, one or two well, of your favorites? I'm definitely going to say, since Saint 14 is coming back, everyone's going to love this one, right? You got to get that head bash. And how can we earn that one? Uh, this one, I believe, is on the season's pass. So yes. Yeah, it's on the season's yeah, pass. As long as you're, you're, uh, you get the season's pass and you're playing the game, then you'll be able to earn this fairly quickly. Wonderful. And then you'll also have other ones that are going to be in the Eververse store. Uh, my personal favorite is this one here. Love that one. All right, so it's easy to yep. do this to a uh, you know sweeper bot tackle dummy, but uh, why don't you give us a taste of how this stuff actually looks in the wild? Definitely. So and for that on, we take you live here. to Mercury and oh, it's a sparrow. It is sparrows on Mercury. Let's see your parkour skills. Ooh. Can you stick the landing? Can you stick the landing? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Beautiful. Stuck that landing too. Where are you going? Come kick. Where are you going? Oh, oh you. you're too, far I'm, too I'm, lethal. I'm too good. Just too too good for our own good. All right, seeking targets. You'll do. <laughs> Shoot him in the kneecap. You're kneecapping that guy. Oh, there's the headbutt. Beautiful. 
Come on. Well, this isn't oh, okay, your dance. You want, you want some of this? <laughs> yeah, you can have some. Wonderful. All right. That all, that all looks great. So, changes afoot. Uh, new stories, new artifact, uh, new combat meta. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when we're telling a new story and we have new media out there, we love to watch their reactions. But uh, when we change the way they fight, there's obviously reactions there as well. Yeah, so I, I think we've talked a lot about the combat. We've talked a lot about Mercury, and we're going to see the Sundials soon. And I think something to uh, think about and understand for the season is that there's going to be a lot more than 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 just Mercury, than than just just the combat, right? Like you're going to be you're going to be asked to go throughout the solar system, go to Tangled Shore, go to destinations that you haven't been to in a while, to basically help stop this new Cabal threat. Uh, that's appeared in the system and you know as you guys are actively uh, uh, playing the season and you're reacting to it we're going to be listening we're going to be watching and we're going to be thinking of how we can integrate the things that uh, you care about uh, you like or dislike into our future season development and it's, and it's, it's something that we we think about a lot and we try to pay attention to a lot so Ooh. yeah uh, new pvp maps bring yep, we back. got rusted lands coming back rusted yeah. lands is coming back yep. so you know for for every type of player of destiny are already <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm ready yeah and rusted lands is so certainly near and dear to our hearts because that's really where the Destiny sandbox was born. A lot of our earliest iterations on the way Guardians move and the way they fight come off of that map. And yeah. uh, that's uh, you know a wonderful place to send our community back to. So if you're a fan of the Crucible, there's also new things to engage with. Uh, something for everyone. Yep. And uh, of course, we will be watching, we'll be listening, and uh, this conversation will continue. I think uh, we're being extremely interactive with how we react to the players these days. We're trying, yeah. The developers are yeah. reacting, the game is reacting, even the characters in the world are reacting. So we'll continue that rolling. Indeed. All right. Thank you so much. Indeed. I think it's time now to uh, see the sundial in action. And for that, uh, Let's we see this need to introduce gameplay. you to the fire team that we have assembled right here, live on set. Yeah, and I'm just dipping in. Welcome randomly. to the show, Cosmo. I'm still here. Hey, Deej. Uh, thanks for uh, bringing together a group of people to take on the Cabal in this new activity. Uh, who do you have assembled in your uh, fighting party today? Well, we're ready to go. To my left is Alexandra from the player support team. To my right is Eric, who is an investment test engineer, works on Season of the Dawn. And then across from me is uh, Doug, who is an animator, works on a lot of the emotes that you see. Uh, Mitch is another investment test engineer. And then John is a test engineer. And we're ready to go and take on the sundial. Well, you all look fabulous, but show me your guardians. Let's take a look at uh, how you are dressed for the occasion. Look at that. Uh, lots of new gear to add to your collections. Uh, using our developer tools, we can have this uh, God's eye floating through the space. You can see the gear that uh, every player of Destiny 2 can earn as part of Season of Dawn. And then if you're a holder of the Season Pass, obviously in the premium track, you can earn these ornaments. Uh, very Saint-14 inspired. Everyone's a knight in shining armor and uh, can't wait to make my warlock look that unflinchingly noble. So. Thanks for the preview. Uh, before we actually activate the activity, uh, I would like to introduce you to two more developers who have braved the hot seats. Uh, I'm here with I'm Tim and Matt, and uh, you guys worked to actually create this new activity and, and refresh the uh, destinations. But in your own words, please tell our audience uh, what your contribution was to Season of Dawn. Um, Personally, I was responsible for doing a lot of the visual effects and stuff like that. Uh, but like with our team, like we were able to collaborate all together to build this like uh, beautiful experience. And without the help of Matt, like uh, we ha were able to build something really engaging as well. I am an activities designer, and with the help of uh, Anton, <laughs> ah. we were able to make a really cool experience for you. Uh, I worked on activity structure and counter design, your overall experience as you go through encounters and yeah. interact with the mechanics and your moment to moment of what you're be shooting in the face, essentially. That's yeah. really what it comes down to, yeah, doesn't it's, it? It's, it's, yeah. We've always yeah. been at war with the cabal. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have, whether we wanted it. Whether we wanted it or not. Whether we wanted it or not. <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, check in with our fire team. We're gonna lay down some developer commentary while they shoot those things in the face. Uh, Cosmo, you are prepared to uh, begin this activity. Uh, first thing that we can notice here is that we have a new landing zone for the sundial. And uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, the inspirations and the design motivations that went into breathing some new life into Mercury. So in Mercury, like, um, we had this really good opportunity from narrative to like really clash all these different timelines. You got like past, you got present, you got future. 
And like as artists, like we wanted to like see a lot of these assets again. So like you know, we just like figure out how to make this like as epic and as beautiful as possible. And then like suddenly we had the idea like, why don't we just put all of them all together? <laughs> and it was daunting. It was really scary because like there's a lot of technical challenges. We had to like go around with like lighting. We had to go around the world art and just like it over and over again to like make sure they actually got it all working with these giant time walls and everything. Uh, but in the end, like you know, uh, it was worth it. Like I'm really proud of the work we were able to do. So we're going to be uh, fighting our way up this slope here. Yeah. Uh, Matt, the sundial is sort of emerging in the distance. Uh, this is Osiris's device that he can use to sort of control the corridors of time, mm -hmm. all the alternate realities. Uh, what were some of the themes and what were some of the different motivations that we embraced as we created this new action for the player? Once we, uh, once we learned where we were going on the narrative front, um, Janto, I'm so sorry. Uh, but it was obviously, you know, time cops stopping time crimes. <laughs> time cops <laughs> stopping <laughs> time crimes. Um, and yeah, and you can see players here, they just engaged with one of our new uh, Cabal champions. Mm -hmm. All right, and so here is this enormous device. Uh, Thanks. What were some of the different inspirations for creating this new structure? It's pretty daunting. So for Sundial, like, um, we had to make a, this crazy time machine. Like, it's super dangerous, you know, like it's, Trying to borrow a lot from this like this Vex tech, and then like uh, Osiris, you know, this mar mystical arcane person's like, I got an idea, and he's built this, this crazy thing. So like, we had to mix like a lot of these structures of like um, really cool visual effects language that we have for the Vex, a lot of grids and stuff, and then try to immerse like some of the uh, really like instrumental like technical stuff that Osiris has, you know, which is like more inspired from the like, 18th century like uh, nautical instruments and stuff, and then like we just built it, and like you know, it, it looks great. I love it. So like we, um, like we have set up in other activities, that was a totem they just interacted with and that started the encounter. And it looks like they're in the, uh, the future mm -hmm. encounter here. I love this one. Yeah. So like they the, step uh, through an aperture into a different alternate reality, into a different timeline, um, and... This is what could come to pass. Pardon me? This is what could come to pass. What could come to yeah. pass if we, are, if we are not victorious. And when they activate this activity and they step through that window, um, they're not entirely certain what they're going to get. Like, this can be different combinations of timelines. It's going to be different every time they access the activity, yeah? Yes, and the, uh, the activity bosses will evolve. They will, um, week to week, they'll roll out a new one. And there's some surprises I really wish I could talk about, but I really wish I could talk about, <laughs> but I'm super excited for players to find out what it is. You know, as, as the season uh, as the season rolls on, and to your point, yeah, week over week there yep. will be different bosses for them to face at the end of this activity. Mm -hmm. uh, our enemies have some tricks up their sleeves that will be revealed and understood over time. So your first experience with the sundial will certainly not be like your last experience with the sundial, and right. it, it'll be a you know it'll be a varied experience. So and the uh, the activity can't you always complete it. It doesn't matter who you match make with them. So if, if if players uh, find themselves with you, they'll still be able to complete the, especially you, Dean, they'll still be able to p complete the activity. What, what, Whoa. what? Yeah. <laughs> Shade. Um, especially, uh, so yeah, the, uh, the, whole, the whole, one of the, 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 the goals for when we, when we set this up is, it's not a traditional horde mode. There are, uh, there are mechanics in here, mm -hmm. and you'll find that there's a lot of different strategies you can, you can incorporate in order to get through the activity and earn your rewards as fast as possible. Yeah, okay. And when hard mode comes out, uh, <laughs> you're gonna want to bring some friends that have, you know, that, that have uh, leveled up their artifact and gotten better okay. mods to be able to use the So campaign. point of order, uh, the sundial is a six-player match-made activity. Correct. I can bring a pre-made six-player fire team if I want. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, a team that can communicate with each other and coordinate with each other can complete this activity more efficiently, more quickly, get to that loot at the end. But in terms of hard mode, that does require a pre-made fire team. Yes. Okay. You're gonna just want to set those expectations <laughs> yeah. appropri it's appropriately it's for our community. Uh, so we got some some big bad bosses here. I think players are gonna really enjoy the new champions. One of the big challenges we had to figure out for this particular encounter is that like uh, we had to like be able to throw this ball that creates this giant laser and stuff. So <laughs> I'm so glad we got that in there. Uh, but like one of the difficulties is that you're looking at this really bright sky box and we had to make a laser like yeah. be brighter than the sun <laughs> when you're on Mercury. And that was like, that was a challenge. I'm glad we got yeah. it working, but like, my gosh, we, we had to iterate a lot on that one. Yeah. 
So uh, talk to me about what the players are doing right now. They're picking up these charges. How exactly are they using these to uh, overcome the, the tactical so conditions here? So in this here? possible future, the Cabal have won. They have they've learned to potentially weaponize the light and uh, they have all their ships just in orbit, you know, and uh, you're basically, you know, thematically, you're just basically saying, uh, stop hitting yourself. <laughs> you're, throwing, you're, throwing, you're throwing their kind of beacons. He's like, yeah, when, I remember when we were in production, I went up to Dante, I'm like, can we get a line that says, Idiots, turn off the laser! <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it just cracked me up, but I don't, yeah. I don't think we got it. There, uh, might, there might be a random chance, guys, I don't know, but it was it, it entertaining, <laughs> really. I remember in production, like when you first came up to me, like, hey, you know, we got this prototype working. I saw it, I was like, my gosh, how are we going to pull this off? <laughs> I'm going to blow up the whole goddamn world with this thing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the power fantasy here. The sundial itself, uh, it looks like a very dangerous thing. It looks like the type of thing that your mother would tell you not to play on. And here we're sending six people up on that thing to, to play with time. What were some of the different discoveries that you make along the way through playtest with the sundial specifically? Make friends. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it was actually it was, it was, it was kind of humbling and, and, and just kind of a, it was a great like, exercise in, uh, in just user experience because you, you spend all this time building encounters, building mechanics and, and, and tweaking things, iterating. And the, the, some of the most fun that we had in, in, in playtests and we were noticing is, just, is players just like killing themselves. They really, really just like to, 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 to entertain themselves by just being murdered over and over and over again. So the sundial. It probably uh, has some design flaws. Well, Cyrus, you know, he was just kind of... It's a feature. Yeah, it's a feature. It's just, yeah. yeah, there they go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some timelines they die, and some timelines they yeah. make it, you know? Yeah. You yeah. can't control time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we encourage you all to be very careful uh, as you play on the sundial. Uh, that's the end of the first encounter, and uh, there are several more encounters that would lead to the final boss. Yep. We will unveil different final bosses week over week, and... Uh, that's as far as we're gonna go with all this today. So we've given you a taste of the new action, uh, the conditions, what's at stake, mm -hmm. what you have to fight with. New champions will require a new artifact. Uh, anything else you wanna call out? Um, no, is the, the whole team, the whole team that, that, yeah, that worked okay. on this, were, they just brought it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super proud of everybody. Cool. Yeah. Well, Aww. we thank you for all your hard work. Um, everyone at Bungie who worked on this, pats on the back for everybody. <laughs> Lots of love in this room. Um, if you're sitting in chat, uh, hoping for another, uh, you know, two tokens and a blue moment, uh, you know, we're here to rewrite history. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, enable you to discover the rewards and how all that works. Uh, the first loot drops will be for you to earn. Uh, Season of Dawn begins on December 10th. And, uh, you know, John Toe, one thing we didn't cover is that uh, you have written uh, a number of different chapters of lore, and uh, we're going to be sharing those on Bungie.net. So if you'd like uh, to read about the stories that we're telling before you start to experience them in the game, starting at the end of this stream, we're going to publish our first chapter of pre-launch web lore <laughs> to the Bungie blog. Go check it out. And we're going to have another one to publish every day between now and launch. So on Tuesday, the weekly reset will change the game more than it does on your standard week. Uh, we're really looking forward to you playing Season of Dawn. We thank you very much for tuning into this live stream. Uh, no matter which platform, no matter which channel you're using to watch us, uh, we do love getting the community together to receive some new news. And uh, we can't wait to see you again on Mercury. Please watch your step. It's a dangerous place. Uh, I'm Deej. Uh, thanks to all of the developers who played the new activity or talked about their work sitting in the hot seats. This is the end of our show for today. You've been busy, Guardian. Okay, so seeing as we, uh, we have seen this trailer, let me just turn all the things down because I've got crazy audio all over the place right now. What do you guys think? That was uh, definitely an interesting reveal. A little bit light on some of the details that I'm sure some of us were anticipating. But uh, yeah, looking in the chat, obviously no trials. So that currently isn't a thing that Bungie are going to be doing in the game. And really whether they're going to do that in the future, you know, obviously isn't something that they're speaking about just yet. Um, in terms of the rest of the content, I feel like they've been kind of light on what they've showed us, right? Um, they showed us kind of how the activity actually works, um, but didn't show the completion of it or anything like that. So, obviously, they're kind of hiding secrets, and they did say that, but 
yeah, it's one of those where we really have to uh, see how it pans out in the game. So mainly, I'm going to kind of step away for a moment. Um, definitely kind of read in the feedback uh, and what you guys are saying about it. Um, and I need to look at that roadmap again. I actually don't have. It would be useful if I could find the screenshot of it right here. I'm not sure if they're going to put it on um, Bungie.net. But I've got it in my footage and everything like that. So I'll totally take a step back and um, have a look at that. But yeah, I definitely think it was a kind of light reveal stream. And obviously we weren't anticipating massive amounts of content, right? Um, one of the other questions we're left with is kind of loot tables. How substantial will they be? And what will the end game be? You know, around the rest of the activities. So uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see, guys. But I'm going to summarize it in a video, as always. So um, I'm not going to hang around for too long. But definitely give us your thoughts and jump in when I kind of do that roundup and uh, give us your thoughts of what we've been shown there as well. But for now, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. As always, keep the feedback rolling. And thank you so much for all of the uh, kind of support, tips, new members and all that good stuff. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, guys, we'll have to wait and see, really, how it pans out. And uh, once again, I'm going to take a look at that roadmap. But um, for now, let me go accumulate my footage and I'll be back with a video pretty soon. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out. And um, yeah, give me your thoughts in the comment section on that video shortly. See you in a bit, my friends.